be a person of contentment. Be a person who is satisfied with what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has chose for him, chose for her. There was a man who used to wake up every morning and he would go to the edge of the sea and he would engage in his fishing and come home with only two fish. One fish he would give to his family, the other fish he would sell and reinvest in his family. One of his friends said to him, why do you only limit yourself to two fish? Why not four or five or ten? He said to him, then what? He said, well, then you will become more affluent. He said, then what? He said, then you can think about employing another fisherman to work next to you. He said, okay, then what? He said, well, eventually you can amass enough money to invest in a boat and bring you even more fish. He said, okay, then what? He said, then you can invest in a fleet of boats. Can you imagine? And you will become even more affluent. He said, then what? He said, then you can think about opening up your own fish store in town. He said, then what? He said, then maybe you can think about expanding and having a franchise of shops. He said, then what? He said, then you become a multi-millionaire. He said, then what? He said, then you have peace of mind. He said, my brother, I am already at peace. La ilaha illallah. In other words, why do you need to take me to the other side of the world? in order to bring me to a destination that I have already arrived at. I'm already happy with what Allah has given me. I don't need any more. And what is even more beautiful than this? Are the words of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam who said, summarizing the story in one sentence, he said, being rich and prosperous and wealthy is not about having a lot of money, a lot of material possessions, no. He said, being prosperous is when your heart is content. That is when you are rich. When your heart is content. Allahu Akbar. Brothers and sisters, we are travelers. You are a traveler. You and I are passers-by in the life of this world. And as a passer-by, as a traveler, how many extras do you need? Much of the things that social media and TV has convinced us that we need are in fact extras that we don't need. And as a traveler, how many extras do you want to be carrying on your back? Lightest will be quickest on the day of judgment. Take that as a rule. Lightest will be quickest. So make your motto, make your slogan in life. Oh Allah, if you are pleased with me, if you are happy, then I don't mind what you give me and I don't mind what you withhold. Oh Allah, just be pleased with me. A person of contentment. How many of you would say that Umar ibn Abdul Aziz was a happy man? Raise your hand. Umar ibn Abdul Aziz rahimahullah ta'ala, let's start with him. You know, Umar ibn Abdul Aziz gave up everything when he became Khalifa. SubhanAllah, he, he really gave up everything. Gave up his nice clothes, gave up his 14 palaces, gave up the jewelry in his house, gave up everything. Before that, he was a very happy person on the outside. Very happy-go-lucky, very joyful, always, always had a smile on his face. And then subhanAllah, when he becomes Khalifa and he comes close to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he abandons all of that. And I want you to listen to this and tell me if this sounds like happiness. His wife, Fatima, she says that Umar ibn Abdul Aziz rahimahullah used to, he didn't used to pray a lot of Qiyam Allah, he just used to pray two rak'ahs. He did not surpass anyone with many rak'ahs of Qiyam Allah. But it was just two special rak'ahs that he would pray every night. But she said, you know what? There was a verse that I was afraid he would read. And she said, listen, this wife would, she said, I would make dua to Allah that he would not come across this ayah. Because if he read this ayah, I thought that I would wake up the next day a widow and the ummah would wake up without its khalifa. She said he was like a bird that was being splashed with water meaning he would panic when he would come across this ayah. And so I hoped that I would never see him read this ayah. Because when he read it, I thought he was going to die because of how much he would weep and how much, it, how much it pained him. You know what that ayah was? It wasn't even a full ayah. It was part of an ayah. Surah Al-Shura, the beginning of Surah Al-Shura, Fariqun fil Jannah wa Fariqun fil Sa'ir. A group in paradise, and a group in hellfire. Can you imagine? His wife says, I thought he was going to die when he would read that. Why? Because he feared that he might be fariqun fi sa'ir. He might be from the group of the people in hellfire. And he would cry. And he would panic. And I thought he would die. 
Now, if you look at that, you say, wait a minute, Islam is supposed to give me happiness. Islam is supposed to give me tranquility. What happens? Fast, and, and you know, the Quran is supposed to make a person feel good. Why is it making him feel this way? Why is that ayah having that effect on him? And you know what? Fast forward to the end of his life. As Umar ibn Abdul Aziz is dying, and he says to his wife and children, as he kisses them for the last time, to leave the room. And as they leave the room, they peek into that room. And they see him laying there, and his face illuminates. And you know, Umar ibn Abdul Aziz was afraid of how he would die. He told Raja ibn Haywa when he was dying, Rahimullah, he said, when you receive my body in the grave, I want you to be the one that's standing in the grave to receive my body, and I want you to uncover my face. If you see it facing the Qibla, then say Alhamdulillah, because Allah has forgiven me. If you see it otherwise, then ask the people to forget, to ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to forgive me, because I'm in a turbulent situation. So he was afraid. And as he sends his family out, they look inside and they peek, and they see his face illuminate. And he has a big smile on his face. And you know what he says? He says, greetings to these beautiful faces. These faces that don't belong to jinn or human beings. And you know what he recited? He said, this is paradise. This is the home of paradise. We grant it to those who don't seek status in this world nor corruption. And truly, victory belongs to the believers. SubhanAllah, that same Quran that would cause him to stand up and cry at night. That same Quran that would cause him to panic to a point that his wife thought he would die because he didn't know. He wasn't sure of himself. Is the same Quran that comforted him in his last moments. Be happy with what Allah has given you. He knows why He kept you in your place. But one thing, materialism is taking over very fast. People really are following the latest of everything. I may be guilty of that to a certain extent. May Allah guide me. What I mean is when there's a new phone, we all want to know, hey, what about it? I, wallahi, without a joke. There's a new phone. There's a new this. There's a new handbag. There's a new perfume. How does it smell? But sister, you've got 40 perfumes on your dressing table. You've hardly touched them. Subhanallah, clothing for every occasion. We need a new pair of clothing. I don't know if that's the culture here. In fact, here I was told the last time that when you do a photo shoot at the same function, you need three pairs of clothes. If that is the case, materialism, we are drowning with that. Cut it. That's a sign of the anger of Allah. It's called extravagance. Surely from now we need to ask ourselves if I want to succeed in life, and every one of us would love to see success. I need to realize success in this lifetime is closely connected to the success of the hereafter. Subhanallah. Success and true success in this world is closely connected to your success in the hereafter. When you are bothered about what's going to happen to you after you're going to die, you will be able to prepare correctly and live a life of contentment. Unfortunately, many of us, may Allah forgive us and guide us, starting with myself, I mean. Many of us consider materialism a source of success. When I can afford this car, this house, this watch, this phone, these accessories, this perfume, these holidays, these clothes, then I've succeeded. That is temporary, my brothers and sisters. When your salary is a million dollars, it does not mean you have succeeded holistically. Rather, that success is very, very limited. It is only a portion, perhaps 5% of what we as believers would consider success. And for that reason, Allah's plan is always that those who have the world with them and the materialistic world with them are not necessarily the happiest. In fact, they are not from amongst the happy ones. Because happiness and contentment is achieved primarily by understanding Allah's plan. By understanding you have to worship Allah alone. You have to build a relationship with the one whom you're going to go back to one day helplessly. Helplessly. 
I'm going to go back to Allah the day that your wealth and your children will not help except for the one who has Qalbun Salim, a pure, a clean, a healthy heart that is free of sickness and ailment and disease. And what is that ailment? If anyone has worshipped or associated partners besides Allah, with Allah, they have faulted. Your duty unto that word hadith, that the best of speech is the speech of Allah. The best of words are the words of Allah. Connect yourself to the words of Allah. If you have a very successful businessman, a really successful person on earth, and there are so many names that spring to my mind right now about people who have achieved the millions and the billions and they have a story. They've written about their lives. Many of us would know parts of that story. What about Allah? When Allah has told you that I have sent to you the most powerful message, and that is my word. Many of us have not bothered to try to look into the meanings of the word of Allah. And for that reason, we sway from the left to the right, from the right to the left. And we're not connected to Allah the way we should be. I promise you, if you were to make an effort with the word of Allah, Allah will come closer to you more than you can imagine. The closer you get to the word of Allah, the more the doors of contentment and happiness will open for you. And that is a promise. If you have problems on earth, if you have difficulties with your health, with your wealth, with your social life, with your financial, economic life, pick up the Quran and start becoming close to the word of Allah. When you show dedication, you will notice the calmness in your heart, in your mind, in your system, and you will become happy with what Allah has apportioned for you. Assalamu alaikum brothers and sisters. Hope this video was helpful for you. This may help others too, so please consider sharing. And we will bring more videos in the future, inshallah. So consider subscribing and you won't miss any. Jazakallahu khairan.